I still don't get identified by people off the street as as black and unfortunately and as sad as it is it has helped me and it has sheltered me from a lot of the criticism and a lot of the hate and a lot of the mistreatment that other people um, get. What's up y'all? It's your girl, Brie Dupree, and I'm back with another video. This is gonna be a talky video and as you can tell, there's an echo in here, so I apologize in advance. Um, I thought once I started putting my stuff in here, the echo would subside, but I guess I was wrong, so. And I'm currently trying this new lace glue. Well, it's new to me, the Bold Hold Active. And I've got that laid down and I'm trying to try. I watched this guy called um, Slayed by Jordan here on YouTube and he always like ties these things down so I bought one and I'm trying to change up the wig game so I'm testing it out on the synthetic wig in case things go awry before I try it out on my real wigs and I am super hot at the moment. So today's gonna be a talky type of video. There are a few things on my mind. Um, it might be a little scatter-like. Um, two important things happen in this month. One of them being pride and one of them being my birthday. And my birthday is actually a week from today. Today is the 11th, it's Thursday. My birthday is on the 18th, Team Gemini. And uh, I'm very stressed, you guys. I'm very stressed. Um, I might talk about what's going on in my life in another video, but today we're going to stick to two topics. And that's going to be pride and labels and who we are and who we feel like we need to be so in honor of it being pride month i am going to do hopefully a rainbow-esque look i'm not going to really talk about the products but i'm not sure which palettes i'm using i might use all of these so i'm going to do the eyes first per use you guys know me um i figured the 35i from morphe would be good if i wanted some pastels in there or some nice glitters um i also have take me back to brazil from beach cosmetics because it literally has every rainbow shade that you need i also have the revolution alexis stone um and instinct palette which also has a plethora of rainbows all mattes and then i also have the jawbreaker palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics in case I want just full on pigments. Um, but first I'm going to prime my eyes using none other than my Anastasia eye primer. This has been my favorite primer for the past couple of months. So we're going to do that. So if you saw my video, The Hardships of Being Mixed, I'll link it in the eye cards. Um, I might take it down it's a very emotional video and um i don't know it makes me feel a little awkward watching it but i spoke on there about um a show i watch called the bold type i'm getting freckles on my eyelids um a show i watch called the bold type and there's a girl in there and i'm i think her name is cat um and she is biracial like me and um she thought she was a lesbian she was dating a girl and then she recently started hooking up with like a guy and she was talking about she's not sure what box she belongs in because she's not black she's not white she's not gay she's not straight um and the the guy that was talking to her i think his name is oliver was telling her you know you don't need to be in a box you are who you are basically live your truth and i can connect with that character on so many levels i too am mixed with black and white although some people will try to debate me with what my race is i don't know what's up with that um in case you guys didn't realize this is gonna be a long video so just get a snack because i'm probably not gonna do that much editing and it takes me a long time to get ready so sorry not sorry um so i don't know why people feel the need to tell me what race I am because last I checked um you know 
I know who my mom is and I know who my father is and uh, therefore I know what my ethnicity is, but whatever. Um, and I can also relate to her sexuality. So I, I said this a couple times, I'm gonna build this up a little bit because I want it to be a really light base for these rainbow colors. So um, I've said a couple times on this channel that I date girls or I have dated girls. Um, the first relationship I had with a woman was when I was 18 and I was with her on and off for about seven years. We finally called it quits for good. Um, a couple, six months, I don't know, six months, seven months, eight months, almost a year ago now. And I couldn't be happier. We were very toxic for each other. Some could argue that um, she was a little bit more toxic to me than I to her, but nobody sees, you know, the whole relationship. But um, before her, I dated a guy and I was off and on with that guy. And when I was off with her, I'd be on with him. And when I was off with him, I'd be on with her. And you know, I hook up with guys and I hook up with girls. Um, and I'm not sure what, what my who my partner will be. You know, and I've also talked to trans people and non-binaries. And so I'm not, I don't consider myself bisexual. I really don't consider myself to have a label period. Um, as I've gotten older in my life, I've realized the importance of labels and how they can connect you to other people. So for labeling sake, I tell people I am pansexual. And I always joke that I would marry a tree if it listened to me talk and cuddle right. So if you wanted to know what my stance was on that, maybe let's do like a pastel fantasy, I don't know. I really don't like to stick to a specific stigma or type of person and there is a problem in the lesbian community or at least in my personal experience when you tell people let's just go with this peachy shade first when you tell people that you have dated guys or whatever a lot of lesbians will judge you and look at you strange and have this idea of you um, that you're indecisive and you don't know what you want and um, as my stepdad says you want all the candy in the candy store that's how he likes to put it I was very fortunate when I came out to my mom um, and very fortunate that my family is a very accepting family and a very understanding family and a very edu educated family where I didn't have to deal with rejection or homelessness or emotional abuse for you know who I decide to live my life and share my love with um, for that I will always be grateful you know as long as I am happy my mom is happy um, Plenty of people I've dated, male, female, or trans have been invited to holidays and houses and dinners and they've um, never been treated less than. And um, for that, I will always respect and appreciate um, the people in my family who know and talk to me and care about me as a person, which is very few of them, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, that I'm allowed to sort of live in my truth and not have any backlash for it. But unfortunately, that is not the case for a lot of people. Um, specifically, um, M to F African Americans, they are the recipient of a lot of hate and the vast majority of a lot of murders when it comes to people who have died because of who they are in the LGBTQIA society. And that is just super sad in my opinion. Um, and it seems to be that way throughout the nation, doesn't it? Because when you're ignorant, you identify black, trans women as men and black men receive 
the most hate in this country period the most hate just being themselves the most hate being gay the most hate being trans the most hate being queer the most hate being anything other than the stereotypical black male in the black community and then the most hate from police for being that stereotypical black male in a black society and there really is no winning when it comes to being a black man or when it comes to being black in general and that brings me to my next topic which is my blackness um i had said earlier i'm just i'm really trying to figure out what i want to do this triple smooth i'll start hearing y'all okay um let me pull some of these out sorry let me get my brushes to bring me to my next topic of blackness and i said earlier that in the show she said she's not black she is not white you know um, and that's very true and while I feel like a lot of the times I do pass for not being a black person, for not being an African American, for not checking a box on a race column based off of my lifestyle and my fashion and the way that I speak, even though I feel like I have a lot of ethnic features, you know, this is my dad's gap, this is my dad's nose, um, my dad is the black one out of my parents my mom is white and um I still don't get identified by people off the street as as black and unfortunately and as sad as it is it has helped me and it has sheltered me from a lot of the criticism and a lot of the hate and a lot of the mistreatment that other people um get you know black females are the most abused uh, emotionally and verbally in communities, even in black communities. Black females, especially if, oh, this might not work if I don't have a tacky base. We'll try it out. Black females are less believed when it comes to pain tolerance. They are more likely to die in childbirth based off of if you compare them to um, any other race because doctors don't believe them when they say that they're in pain or when something's not right. Um, not believed and therefore they um, just have a lot of fatalities when it comes to health issues in the medical field. and going to a hospital they are treated less often they have to wait the longest in the waiting rooms i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do warm tones here cool tones there that i, I could do that um so for me personally i have a very i feel like i'm a gemini through and through do you know what i mean um, being that I have two kind of personalities. I have a personality, for argument's sake, that likes boys, that likes girls. I have a personality, for argument's sake, that's a little bit more Caucasian and that's a little bit more black. And I hear it in my voice depending on where I am and who I'm surrounded with, whether or not I talk a little bit more slanged, um, a little bit more relaxed, or whether or not I talk a little bit more educated because of who I'm with. And when I have my first memories, I was raised mainly on my mom's side of the family, um, which consists of a white grandmother, a white great grandmother, white aunts, white uncles, and a lot of my aunts have married black, but this was before they married um, like black men and had mixed, I was the first mixed kid in my family. My grandmother was actually really racist and tried to convince my mom at the time to have an abortion with me because she was scared, because she wasn't educated, because she thought that it mattered. And you know, it does matter in a way. I'm glad that my mom did what she did, even though I was, I think, an unplanned child. Um, because who knows if it wasn't for me being the first mixed kid if my aunts would have followed suit and also had mixed children and it's a very hard thing when you're mixed and when you have people in your family who 
are white and aren't fully educated on your other side because for a long time I didn't know how to do my hair. To this day I don't know a lot of traditional black uh, songs or tradition like you know how you have classics like my classics are like journey you know like the uh, like the um well, not the osbournes what are they called the ozzies i don't fucking know um you know just like classic rock that's kind of like where mine is elton john you know those were the classics for me when i was growing up not um I can't even think of one. Barry Manilow is that one? See, I can't even think of one. This this is like the perfect argument for me. You know, I'm like giving you an example. Like I don't even know. I don't even have an example. Um, I didn't learn step. Oh, okay. R. Kelly, I guess, could be one. But you know, with what's going on, he's kind of we we kind of don't like him anymore. Um, so it's hard, and it's hard to educate those around you and to be to use that bridge that you have as a weapon you know it's hard to when people say something ignorant for me to, to correct them because I feel uncomfortable um, but that's something that if you have access to do that that you should do that we should all do and that's something that I've decided that I'm gonna start doing um, and there's a lot of things that I've let slide and comments that I've let slide from my friends who are white from my family who is white because I chuck it up to they don't know and I've always had this mentality that um, I'm not really confrontational and I don't really want to start any confrontation and so if I just be quiet and I don't say anything that it'll be better and that's not the case not saying something doesn't make anything better if anything when somebody around you says something about the a different race that they aren't that they don't know about that they haven't lived through and you know firsthand what it's like or you are you should take the opportunity to correct them because they'll think that your silence is validation or is supporting their views and it took me a long time to realize that um and now that I have realized that I am going to make more conscious choices when it comes to correcting, you know, my sister when she says something that I don't feel like is right or correcting my mom or my aunts or my uncles if I talk to them and things like that. So um, what I'm getting at, sometimes it's hard to feel like you're the voice of a group that you're not 100% a part of or have been told that you're not a part of. I've been told by black people all the time that I'm not black. And honestly, there was even a post I saw on Facebook the other day that somebody had shared. And thankfully, I'm woke on these um, things that happen. Like some people are just now hearing about, hearing about priest br brutality. I've heard about it for years because I grew up in a white suburban area and then for high school we moved to inner city Chicago and I went to a Chicago public school where there was about three mixed people and two Puerto Ricans and the rest were black and so I can kind of see from both ends and so therefore I have friends on my Facebook from my high school that are black and have access to these things and they share them and then I learn on my timeline what's going on with my people and yes I do consider them my people um but on my facebook there was a post that said biracials aren't or if you're what did it say if you're mixed you're not black that's what the post said and my first question that i had that popped in my head is i don't understand why people feel comfortable enough to make statements like that it was a black man holding up a sign and i'm pretty sure somebody probably photoshopped those words onto it because that's what people are doing these days and my whole thing is first of all why was this even necessary number one like who has hurt you what mixed person this fallout is unreal what mixed person has hurt you so bad that you feel the need 
to make a statement and you're not even a part of the mixed community. You don't even know how it feels to be mixed and you're just validating how, it, how everybody sees us. And it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard when you're a mixed kid who's light skinned. You know, my, my nephew is really, really tan. He's really dark. You can tell by looking at him that he's mixed with something. You know, that you can tell by looking at him that he's not a 100% Caucasian. And for me, when my afro is not out, when I'm wearing a wig, when I have makeup on, despite the fact that I feel like I very strongly look like a black individual, I am told constantly, constantly that I am not um, by people who don't even know me. Um, and I feel like part of the reason is a little bit of jealousy or a little bit of hate because of how they get treated, how black people get treated by white people all the time. And it's not their fault to feel this way. Um, it's not their fault to think of things the way that they do. It's just how they were brought up and it's just how their surroundings happen to be. And it's pretty sad. So now that it is Pride Month, I have a little bit more of you followers and, um, or I should say subscribers. And if you don't support me or my lifestyle or who I am, that's, I'm 100% okay with that. Um, I am not somebody who wants to please everybody that's not my mo that's not who i am i think this is gonna turn out pretty okay after we juice it up a little bit it's looking a little inconsistent.com but i feel like we can get there you know what i should use <sighs> got some reds in the blood sugar because this red isn't red enough for me and there's not even really a red in here to be honest I'm just kind of try to deepen this stuff up. Oh yeah, that's way better. Way better than what was going on. I am going to start to talk about subjects like this on my channel. Um, one, because I realized since I'm not the most popular channel, I kind of have a little bit of a lee leeway if you if you you know could put it that way because I don't have to deal with as much flack as somebody with a wider audience has to deal with. And also I feel like my unique point of view is valuable. I feel like this is one of the things that I was meant to do in a sense i'm going to put a shield on this eye because that was just an obscene amount of fallout <laughs> in my opinion and i don't need that negativity in my life in other news life has made me completely stressed you haven't realized yet or you don't watch me um, I have moved into my own place um, and so unpacking and getting furniture and all of that has been stressful on its own. Right now I'm currently not working because I was supposed to have a job and it fell through and it was a send off. Oh that is just not going to work this screen it's just not going to work. Um, but I might be working again soon. They decided that unemployment benefits could stop after July 31st because apparently the economy doesn't need it anymore. And I don't know about what's going on in your guys' state, but my state is currently going to move to a stage four of reopening, 
which means that Ulta will most likely be able to be open at 100% capacity, which means I will be called back into work pretty soon and my unemployment will end and my $1,000 plus $400, just my bills are probably over $2,000 a month to be honest. And um, so I'm stressed about that because I rem it's just me here. It's just me who lives here. I have nobody to help me pay the rent or pay the bills nobody to split anything with and so it gets stressful we're gonna try some of those other greens because jawbreaker man i don't really use jawbreaker that much um but it's giving me some problems i'm gonna dip into one of these greens over here and see what the tea is on that because bh never lets me down I don't know how you guys have been feeling during all of this. If you're just as stressed as me or not stressed at all. Look at that. It's just like I'm not even like what is going on around here? Well, this eye is going to be complete and utter trash. I didn't really say much about Black Lives Matter movement because for me, I have always been a part of the movement. What's happening is super unfortunate and it's been happening for years, for decades. Um, and I think that it's a combination of people having more time on their hands because of what's going on. Um, and just the right person who shared this video because it's not the first video of a black man being killed by a police officer it's definitely not the first video to, to cite, circle around um but i just feel like it was the right combination of people having maybe a little bit more time on their hands being fed up with our government and um coming together that we finally got maybe more people angrier than usual when these things happen. Um, and yeah, the police officer got arrested and was charged, but please don't think that that means he's going to jail. We need more pressure um, on the system. We need people to consistent, consistently still post and make this topic make this a topic of discussion still because there's been plenty of police officers who have gotten arrested in the past and have never been charged and basically got away with murder and it's just ridiculous but anyways we're trying i'm trying to talk about pride with you guys i'm trying <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like, this video is all over the place and I 100% apologize. I just have so many thoughts and I've just felt so in this moment for so long. And I mean, I, I go on social media. I don't know how you guys feel about Facebook. I still am a Facebooker. That's still my main, like I can't even work Twitter. I try to have a Twitter account. If you want to, you can follow me on there. I'm pretty sure it's Brie Dupree. Do I tweet? No. Do I, uh, do I know how to retweet anything? No. Um, I'm following probably like 50 people and they're all YouTubers. And the only reason why I have a Twitter in the first place is because when I was in high school, I had to make an account for a Spanish, um, for a Spanish assignment. So these colors just like dust away. You see that? It's just like, I can just fling it off. I'm getting like patchy. What's hard doing looks like these. That's why we don't do them that much. Well, I do them, I just don't record them that much because of this life and see the cool tones don't like to work together as much that's what I've noticed 
So I'm just coming to terms with the fact that this is as good as it's gonna get. And I'm 100% okay with that. This glitter from NYX, although it just looks kind of rainbowy. Yeah, it does. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's like a rainbow glitter, um, a loose glitter. So when a lot of people ask me, okay, so I'll say this. When I apply for jobs and it asks you what your race is or ethnicity or whatever, I always click prefer not to answer um, because there's an option for two or more races, but I always feel like, and this is just my personal feelings and my personal opinions, that I shouldn't, it shouldn't matter what race I am to work a job. That's just where I'm at with it. Um, other people can have other arguments and things to back up their arguments. How I feel is I shouldn't have to, it doesn't matter what race, what race I am in order to work a job. That's how I feel about it. Um, everybody, it, everybody is welcome to have their own opinions about it um, and how they feel and that's fine. Um, that's how I feel. I almost want to not answer about what gender I am because I also feel like that doesn't matter either. But I always pick female. I mean, because I am. But um, I almost feel like I shouldn't even have to do that. I always forget that I don't like this base. I try to like it as much as everybody else talks about it and uses it and raves about it. And I always forget that I don't like it. But I bought it and I'm trying to use it. So I think I'm going to put this glitter on first and then we'll go in with the other one and we'll add some dimension. I'm going to take some of that rainbow one and put that towards all over but concentrate it towards the inner portion of the eye. I'm trying not to stress about the future uh, it's really hard not to this is definitely a um, unique eye look I'll tell, I will tell you that much okay so all I did for the eyes was I put red under here and then I blended it out with yellow and I put purple under here and I blended it out with green and I put mascara on and now you guys are up to date and we can move on so for lips um I want a super nude um lip so I'm gonna first go in with my brown lip liner this is BFF3 I'm gonna also do some lip contouring to make my lips look a little bit bigger Hopefully this looks right. I'm gonna go in with, this is Jeffree Star Nude Beach. Moonchild gloss on, maybe it'll tone it down. So let's try that. Yep. I had eyeliner up here and you guys didn't even tell me so I fixed it. So this is officially the finished look. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Be proud of yourself and be proud of who you are this Pride Month. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.